the world is experiencing massive trauma with the COVID-19 pandemic and an increasing violence from social tensions and political extremisms. Public health consequences for these recent society-wide traumas are yet to be determined. More than 70% of adults in the U.S. will experience some type of trauma in their lifetime. And this could be from exposure to violence or natural disasters or currently pandemic stress. These traumas trigger fight or flight responses, which prepare the body to defend against life-threatening situations. These threats eventually subside in most people. However, some people go on to develop post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD after experiencing trauma. When most people think of PTSD, what comes to mind are male veterans who experience some type of military trauma. What if I told you that the face of PTSD actually looked more like this? A little known fact is that a woman is almost three times more likely than a man to suffer from PTSD after trauma. Women also tend to suffer from PTSD symptoms four times longer than men. So when it comes to trauma exposure, the stakes are especially high for women. Why is that? 20 years ago, when I started my research career in neuroscience, I had no idea that my journey would lead me to ask this fundamental question. Why are women more vulnerable than men to PTSD? What I did know was I had this amazing job that basically paid me to ask questions. And if you had known me as a little girl, you would know that I was always asking questions. I always needed to know why and how. Why are things the way they are? How can they be changed? So here I am in graduate school, studying to become a neuroscientist, a scientist who studies the brain, or as my 12-year-old son calls me, a brainiac scientist. And I'm teeming with questions. To help answer my questions, rats like this one model the human brain and human behavior. My research is on fear in rats, which translates to trauma in humans. My questions are not only related to the subjective feeling of fear. I also want to understand fear as a biological construct that can be measured in the brain. You can see behind me a chamber where I trained rats just like this one to fear certain things. To induce fear, rats were exposed to an inescapable electric shock. These rats quickly developed a fear of the shock along with other cues present during shock exposure, such as a light or an odor. Through a process called fear conditioning, these cues gained the power to trigger fear responses even after the shock was no longer present. We humans respond the same way when faced with an inescapable threat. We learn to associate with those threats cues that become triggers. Those triggers spark fear responses that persist even after the threat is no longer around. Let's say, for example, you were robbed at gunpoint outside of a grocery store. You are now fear conditioned to feel fear every time you drive past that grocery store. The grocery store itself becomes a trigger that reminds you of the trauma that you experienced there. So my job as a neuroscientist is to discover how these traumatic memories are formed and how they lead to mental illness. So when I ask the question, why are women more vulnerable to PTSD than men, I did what I was trained to do. I searched the neuroscience literature for answers. And now I was the one that was shocked. Less than 2% of all fear conditioning research used female subjects in their experiments. That's when it hit me. I had actually never handled a female rat, and I was not alone. What I discovered was almost all biomedical research was done exclusively on male animals. So I asked my advisor, I asked my colleagues, why don't we study female rats? The common answer that I got was, well, the female reproductive cycle, which involves dynamic fluctuations in sex hormones, creates cyclical variations in behavior. In other words, female behavior is messy and complicated, and it has something to do with our reproductive cycle. This didn't sit right with me. So I went back to the literature and searched for answers. It showed that the female brain releases sex hormones into the body in a cyclical pattern based on the female menstrual cycle. One sex hormone called estrogen seems to play an important role in female emotional behavior.
The amount of estrogen in the body fluctuates dramatically across the female 28-day menstrual cycle. When the estrogen levels are high, such as when you're ovulating and most fertile, females show less fear. However, when estrogen levels are low, such as in the early stages of the cycle, we're more anxious. This suggests that the menstrual cycle, or the estrus cycle as it's called in rats, may play an important role in how females react to and recover from trauma. Interestingly, the word estrus comes from ancient Greek mythology and means gadfly. Hera, the goddess of childbirth, sent this annoying gadfly to torment her husband's secret lover. See the connection? So we avoid studying females because variations in the estrus cycle complicates the data. Rather than study these variations, researchers just avoid it completely by excluding females from experiments. This is wrong. Yet studying males to understand females is still the status quo. You don't have to be a brain scientist to see the serious irony in that. The bias against studying females leaves a gaping lack of understanding in why PTSD is more prevalent in women than men. Studying males and females is exactly what we need to do to address this enormous sex disparity and mental health. Then my research took another unexpected turn. Shortly before I was to complete my dissertation research, I was faced with my own trauma. Similar to a rat in a fear conditioning chamber, I was literally cornered, trapped, terrorized, and forced to fight for my life. However, I escaped and I survived. With time, my visible scars healed. From my outward appearance, my battle with severe anxiety was not apparent. Others didn't see that I hid my panic attacks that felt like a sudden, intense fear that was so strong, I felt like I was going to die. Because I am a scientist, I was able to recognize that I was experiencing PTSD symptoms. But despite my understanding, I could not control the impact of trauma on my own brain and body. I did know I needed both professional and personal to support in order to continue to function as a healthy woman and mother. So I got the help that I needed and I pushed on. I went back to the lab and I finished my doctoral research. And now I'm armed with a PhD, an award-winning dissertation, and an even deeper commitment to understand why women suffer disproportionately from PTSD. I now translate the fear conditioning model from animals to humans. Using a human version of fear conditioning, I train women to fear certain cues. I also track their menstrual cycle and I measure their sex hormones. Key discoveries from my research are that when women's estrogen levels are low, they show exaggerated fear responses compared to when their estrogen levels are high. It seems that estrogen buffers the impact of traumatic memories on the body. Perhaps estrogen is serving a protective role in women's mental health. The good news is that by asking questions that challenge the status quo, I was able to gain critical insight into the role of estrogen in women's mental health. My research colleagues are doing the same. I urge fellow scientists to proactively address sex disparities in mental health by factoring both sexes in their research studies. The more good news is that the historical over-reliance on males in biomedical research is slowly starting to fade in the scientific community. Case in point, the National Institutes of Health recently mandated the inclusion of both males and females in animal and human research. This is progress. And because I am a witness to fear behaviors in both the laboratory and in my own female body, I am a more informed PTSD researcher. I know that healing from trauma comes from recognizing the symptoms and advocating for solutions. I am not the only one healing from trauma. Millions suffer in silence. Even if you're not a woman, you know someone who suffered trauma. The COVID-19 pandemic is our nation's most visible trauma. Each of us is also witnessing an invisible trauma that affects the women in our lives. I will keep 
doing research on PTSD in men and women. I know the power of asking tough questions, and I will never stop asking them. I challenge you to do the same.